So in this video, uh, we're going to go through this example where we've got the region between the curve defined by x equals cosine of t, y equals sine of t, the x-axis and the lines x equals minus 1 and x equals 1. Now I know that this bit is going to be a bit redundant here, but I'm just, I'm just making it clear, so that's why I've included it is rotated through 360 degrees about the x-axis. Find the volume of revolution which is formed. So x equals cosine t, y equals sine t uh, gives you a circle centered at the origin with radius 1. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the half circle. And when that is rotated about the x-axis, then that is going to form a sphere. So, um, the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So, with a radius of 1, we would expect to get 4 thirds times pi times 1 cubed. So, 4 thirds pi. Okay, so we would expect the answer to be that. So, we're going to see whether the mathematics gives us that result. So, because we are rotating about the x-axis, the volume will be the integral between x equals minus 1 and 1 of pi times by y squared dx. Okay, But because the curve is defined parametrically, we're going to have to think a little bit more about this. So because we're looking at x equals minus 1 to 1, we need to think of the corresponding t values that go with that. So we're going to need to put uh, 1 equal to cosine of t and solve that. And minus 1 is equal to cosine of t and solve that. OK, now cosine of t uh, is equal to 1, then t will be equal to 0. OK, and then when uh, cosine t is minus 1, then uh, we'll be at pi. OK, so make sure we're working radians here. Now, the thing about this is that the x value of 1 will go with 0. So we're going to have to replace the 1 with 0. And we're going to have to replace the minus 1 with pi. Now, of course, this creates a little bit of an oddity because you've got the limits the wrong way round. OK, well, not the correct way round to how you would expect them to be. Um, but don't worry about that, OK? But that is important that we get that right. If we got them the wrong way around, we put 0 to pi, um, we would get the negative uh, of our answer, OK? The negative of the correct answer. So we should get minus 4 thirds pi if we do that. OK, so then we're going to have pi. Then we're going to have y squared dx by dt dt. OK. So we've got the integral between pi and 0 of pi times y squared, so sine squared t, times by dx by dt. Now, dx by dt would be minus sine of t. OK, and then we've got dt. Now, there's a couple of things I can do here. The first thing that I would do is I would bring the minus sign through, and that's going to flip the limits. I'm also going to bring the pi to the outside of the integral. So pi times the integral now between 0 and pi. So remember, that minus sign has been used to flip the limits. And we've got sine cubed of t dt. OK, so now how are we going to integrate sine cubed? Well, essentially, it's in this form that I really want to think about it, the sine squared times sine of t. Because I can replace the sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared. So this is pi times the integral between 0 and pi of 1 minus cosine squared t sine of t dt. Just about managed to write it. <laughs> OK. Right, OK. So we're going to have pi times the integral between 0 and pi of, now multiply that through, sine of t, take away sine of t, cosine squared t, dt. 
Now, I'm going to go straight into the integral here because sine of t integrates to minus cosine t. And the sine t cosine squared, well, that I can do by reversing the chain rule. So thinking of it as cosine of t squared, the derivative of cosine t is minus sine t, which is what I've got out the front. OK, so actually this will be plus one third cosine cubed t between 0 and pi. Now, if you're not happy with that, OK, um, what you could do is you could integrate this by substitution using u is equal to cosine t, and you should get the same thing. Let's just double check that one third cosine cubed t differentiates back to minus sine t cosine squared, just to kind of convince you. Well, I know that the q is going to come down the front, so 3 is going to come down the front, knock out the 1 third, and I'm going to take 1 from the power, so I'm going to be left with 1 times a cosine squared. But the derivative of the inside has to come outside as well. The derivative of the inside is minus sine t, and that's where that minus sine t is going to come from. So yeah, that all works. So now I've got to evaluate this. So that's equal to pi times by. Now I've got to substitute in pi. So cosine of pi is minus 1. So take away minus 1 is 1. Cosine of pi was minus 1. So we're going to have minus 1 cubed, which is minus 1, times a third. So take away 1 third. Now I need to substitute in the 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. So we're going to have minus 1. Then cosine of t, or cosine of 0 is 1. 1 cubed is 1 times a third, so plus 1 third. OK, so what have we got? Well, we've got 1, take away minus 1, which is 2, minus a third, take away a third, which is minus 2 thirds. Now 2 is 6 thirds, take away 2 thirds, which is 4 thirds. So that's 4 pi over 3, or 4 thirds pi, as we predicted. OK? Now, obviously, you'll be going, well, we've got a formula for the volume of sphere. Could I not have just used that? Um, well, um, two answers to that, really. Um, the first answer is, uh, if this question came up, they would ask you to fully justify your answer and show you're working. OK, using integration. Um, but the likelihood is this wouldn't come up, OK, um, whereas this, this way of working it through could be used um, for an ellipse, OK, which we don't have, you won't know a formula for, um, and can be adapted to any number of different problems, OK? So it's really the methodology here. It's not uh, predicting, oh, will uh, a circle come up and can I just use the volume of a circle uh, formula, uh, volume of a sphere, rather. So don't think of it that way. Think of it as we are um, working through algebra that could be then adapted to solve a number of different problems that aren't just spheres.